Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, bird's nest. Imagine that, right? That's Jim Diggity right there. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. What's up guys? So we're gonna take a look at some unit heaters, a total of four of them, that are inside this big old warehouse right behind me. I see a bunch of bird's nests from what I've looked at so far. All right, right here is one high-tech non-digital thermostat. All of them I've turned on and they have all started to fire off, which is not good because like I said, there's combustible bird stuff in there. So you've got one heater right there, right there, way back there, and one right up here and thermostats are spread out all over the area. We've got our nitrogen tank here. We're not running a regulator, but the big thing is if you ever do this, make sure you don't use an end that can be stopped on the end because that's potentially 2,500 to 3,000 PSI and it could blow your eyeballs out if it was to break. So it's not really smart or advisable to do. Over here is our lift. Thank goodness they've got one because I don't think we get up there very easily. All right, that puts us straight up in the air, nice and beautiful. All right, super duper. Let's get started, shall we? We've got a potentially standing pilot here, which is mind boggling that they are still staying lit. Get our small Phoenix light out, that'll help out. There we go. We're in October right now. So it's getting ready to get cold, getting down to the 50s at night already. Just what everybody's looking forward to. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, bird's nest. Imagine that, right? That's Jim Diggity right there. Jim Diggity in the house. High tech redneck stuff, bud. What's crazy is the pilot is still lit. This thing can go up in a blaze of glory really quick. Sorry, but I'm not going to go out of my way to get that just fancy fancy probably some disease or something in there, but it's all good. That don't seem like it comes off very good. Usually you can pull two pins and they just drop, but of course that don't seem quite the case with this. I think she's locked in there. Yep, she's locked in, so we gotta take this back panel completely off. There we go. And that was a brilliant design by the manufacturer. You can't remove that that other stuff in the way. Super deeper. Okay, what I usually do is I blow all the dust out of them, blow out the burners, I blow out the pilot, that way it gets all the crap out of it. And usually you're pretty good to go after that. From what I'm seeing, we got majority of the bird dust out of there. Oh, it's not bad, Liff. I've been all working. No, I, this is actually a pretty nice one. <laughs> I think I'm gonna wire tie that bottle in place. That sucker gonna end up falling over and blow my head off. There we go. Yep, nice and... Now we're secured. Now we're OSHA standard. We're all good now. Hold. Look at that nice clean pilot. Looks like it's staying lit. Rotator back to on. Do you want to go ahead and turn the thermostat up on this one? Uh, I will. Um, actually, let me check the heat exchanger real quick. That makes right. make sure that's all right. All right, so we can check up there. I don't see anything up there on top. And we're gonna check this heat exchanger here, make sure we don't have no cracks down the center because usually that's where they crack at. Horizontal, there's a little speck of something. Nothing there. I mean. The cracks, for the most part, ain't going to cause a uh, CO issue in a building like this, but it could cause a possible fire issue. And that's not something that we want. It appears to me, going across the top, the back sides, that is probably fine. All right, yeah, if you wanna go ahead and turn it on, let's see what happens here. Let's see if we got power on that transformer. Same thing we do with the solenoids, it should work. Go to amps. I've got power on it. See how I got some amperage there? Yeah, I got power on it. My transformer's live. Jump this sucker out. I pass that. Wanna oh, come on. There is a limit switch there, if you see that, but that 
is in line with the thermal couple. Cast valve's got power to it, but nothing's happening. Let's unhook one of these and see. See if it doesn't click. Never have liked these where they intercept the thermal couple. This limit's tripped. But even then, well, it wouldn't be a limit trip. Got power. 28 volts. I don't carry these on the truck anymore like I used to. See if this limit up on top opens up. It should take the thermal couple or take the, yeah, knock the pilot out. Like that. Which tells us that the safety circuit inside the gas valve is working. So we know that if the pilot goes out, it will shut down. So yeah, we wouldn't have no transformer if any of those were tripped. Sounds to me like we need a 24 volt standing gas valve. So it's bad. Need a gas valve. Don't know what to tell you. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it off with the gas valve or the gas stop. That way it don't kick on later, malfunction or something stupid. Yep, that'd be bad. Not so bad. Nitrogen. Let's go ahead and turn this one on. It's uh, to the left of that door. Look at that. Look at them beautiful flames. Beautiful. We just loosened the two nuts or zip screws on the side up just for a click. Hopefully the fans all work. Ah. Motor is freaking. Yeah, it tripped limit. Huh. Everything you got here is broke. Yeah, that's why we call you, I guess. Man. Yeah. That's maintenance issue there. Yeah. Same thing. These are all the same. Well, I thought I heard a click, so I'm pretty sure our snap disc for our fan control is good. Is that the only breaker box back here in the back? Yeah, this is the only breaker box this building. Okay. Tell you what, I'm going to put a a uh, meter on this and you flip them until we find it and that way we know for later okay so let's go ahead and check it with our meter just to make sure nothing worse than ordering a motor and it not be what's really wrong yeah that's it go ahead and kill it again okay well we know for a fact Aroni. that's the problem so we'll go ahead and put those back on and we'll leave the cover off so it makes it easy. We'll just, uh, and who knows how long it's gonna take to get back. So we'll write on there, bad motor. Bad, boom, 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 boom. That way you know for certain in case you forget. There ain't nothing worse than forgetting. Sometimes when you got this many of them. Let's go ahead and drop this turkey back down. There we go, very good. Still burning. Yep, all of them the pilot's been running. All right, go ahead and turn this one on. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it must be on a different burner or a different breaker. Yeah, a little bit of leakage there on that pilot tubing. That's nice. There goes the fan. So we can tighten that up a little bit. There we go, beautiful. Let's go ahead and swing this turkey down. Down, 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 down. That's kind of cool, I like this thing, it's pretty nice. Yep, he's in there sleeping, permanently sleeping, I think. He got his beak caught in there, and yeah, he's he's not doing so well. Not doing so hot. That's some good stuff.
This one kind of burned some stuff up. Yeah, he was working a little overtime here on this one. Blew some of the birds out. You're gonna need to order new limits. I think those limits are all smoked and gone. Fan control too, that's, that's all smoked and gone. We're just probably gonna steal this fan. Yep, that's it. Looks to me like uh, we should be able to just unhook that fan from the box there with this two quarter inch screws. We'll go ahead and um, just cut these wires loose and we'll leave a little trig, a little stig of a trig. And that way we know which one it goes to for later, which obviously white's common. I know guys, this is some really high tech crap here. This is this is the, the big leagues. Robin, Peter and Pan Paul making it go. It's not even hot out or cold out, but if it's like all the other crap that we can't get half the time. There's that, and we'll switch this around and we'll yank the fan right out of there. That's not too bad. Good old uh, Resner, I mean, they make some good stuff. At least they used to. I don't know how much, so much anymore, but yeah. There we go. As long as the motor didn't get burned up. We should be good. And we can get that other one. It seems like it turns. Yeah, it toasted that crap. It toasted that completely. So those are the two wires that go to the uh, thermal couple brake, which we'll have to redo those. And yeah, we could steal gas valve off of this one. But I'm not fooling with that. And this right here is the high uh, voltage one that needs to be replaced. That's completely jacked to the max maximus there. That's uh, these two wires here. Which we'll go ahead and snip those off and see if we can pull them out. Probably got some gloves on there. I don't want that bird poop on my hands. It might have disease in it of some sort. The problem is, see, these wires are too too short now to work. There we go. Yeah, that's was all melted together. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Yep, that is just lovely. Over two wires over there to close for the fan to come on. And then the limit switch I believe is hopefully turning off the gas valve. I don't even know where they went. I mean, they're completely gone. Melted them completely. And there's some crap in there yet. It's still, I ran out of nitrogen. It's completely empty. And uh, let's go see if we can get this other one up and going and uh, I'd be done for the day. It is Friday the 13th. Hopefully this one's turned off still. Let's take a peek here and make sure. I think I got my cheater stick in here. Not that you should trust those anyway. One of the fastest motor changes ever. Those two little wires through there and we should be good to go. Yep. Look at that. Just like grandma used to make. With a name like Jack Henry. You know it's gotta be good. Yeah, that was an optional screw. Now what did reception go to tonight? Tonight? Yeah. That's a weird one. Well, just doing it on a Friday in general, I DJ'd for 20 years. I never did any, I maybe did one wedding on a Friday. Yeah. Low budget? Uh, yeah, it's low budget. <laughs> it's, uh... We got flames. We'll see whether we get fan. All right, so fan didn't start. 
spun it, went the wrong direction, and uh, needed a capacitor. So we're gonna drop it in there and hope that it works. This is that transplant one. All right, go ahead and give her some juice. All right, let's see if she gets loose and crazy. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll blow the right direction this time. Now that other one had bearings seized up, so that's a different issue. They would usually bearings or bushings, ain't they? Yeah, these might be sleeve bu uh, bushings or... That's a little better. Yeah. Hooked on phonics worked for me. Yeah. Good deal. So now we've got two of them that are working. Got this one here and the one over there, so they've not a big hurry now. That one there's going, so that one over there, we just gotta get a gas valve for it. And right. then that one over there, we just gotta get a limit switch, fan control, and a fan motor. This here basically is just a replacement fitting that goes into a regulator. I bought a uh, fitting to adapter to go to flare, but like I said, it's not really safe if you're an idiot. Don't do it, because you could have a catastrophic failure there. It's definitely not safe, but I always wondered how these guys were blowing out condenser coils with and with 250 pound regulator or 500 pound regulator just coming out like peeing out of a straw. That's how you do it. All right, guys, so we're back again. And what they decided to do, because we couldn't get these parts that we needed, is we just went ahead and swapped out the gas valve and the motor. So to round this up, we took the gas valve and the motor from that heater down there on the far end. And we pretty much transplanted the gas valve to this unit down there at the far end. To, and we also did the, ga the uh, fan motor, which we did on the earlier trip on this one here. And then this one down here, what we ended up doing was just completely disconnecting it from the gas line. It's just completely unhooking the gas line and the electrical from it. And that unit is pretty well disconnected and they're gonna scrap it. They're going to put in a tube. Uh, they're gonna put in a radiant heater over here above the dock. And that's where they say they need the most uh, of the heat at. Um, but these here are still working. I just got done going through, they had a gas leak. So I just went through with my Inficon combustion and did not pick up anything. So I don't think they really had a gas leak. I think they could have either had a, a forklift that wasn't working right or what, but this here's what I use for R290 and I use for my combustion leak uh, testing, which is the gas made by Inficon. It runs on 2D batteries, so they last forever. And when they do go bad, you just replace them. Uh, has a Figaro sensor in it, which that's using about half of the different brands out there. Pretty simplistic and works pretty good. But that's going to wrap this call completely up. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, I've got plenty of other ones. Check out these links up here in the corners to the most recommended and the latest one released. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.